Hey guys, you're watching DShack Tech, and recently I was asked what application I use for editing my videos and if I had any tips to give on how I edit. Um, so to answer the first question, I use Final Cut Pro 10, and here are some tips that I use every day. So first of all, I use Final Cut Pro 10 rather than older versions of Final Cut because A, the magnetic timeline, and B, it is just really all I need. The critics claim it is iMovie on steroids, well, that pretty much describes what I need for my editing setup perfectly. Um, those who complain are professionals, and they probably have a right to complain, but with that being said, these tips are not from a professional standpoint. I consider myself a prosumer, and still that's an exaggeration at best. I'll be giving tips for the average user that will make their Final Cut experience just a little bit better. Um, so before you get all mad in the comments, um, this is for the average Final Cut Pro user, which I believe I can help with. So the first tip um, deals with shortcuts. My recommendation to everyone using any editing application or any application anywhere for that matter is to use shortcuts. Um, this is already heavily implemented into the Final Cut Pro 10 program, uh, but you can further customize them to more specifically adapt to your workflow and finger placement. Um, some examples of this are Shift R to go back one frame, Shift Z to show your entire timeline, Shift G to combine clips. Um, don't forget to limit yourself just to these though. This is what I use personally and created. Recognize what you repeatedly do a lot within Final Cut Pro and create a shortcut that is easy to execute and add it through the virtual keyboard. My second tip deals with workflow. Whenever I upload movie clips to my computer from my camera, I put it into a single folder that will contain all my video files. It will contain all my videos, pictures, and recordings. This makes it extremely easy to keep organized when importing your footage into separate events within Final Cut. As you see here, I have a ton of events on the left hand side, each with their separate video, pictures, and sound recordings. Another tip for workflow is naming the events um, correctly. I use letters in the beginning because Final Cut organizes alphabetically, and to capitalize on that, I put an A for app review and a P for product review and so on. It organizes my list of events, making it easier to get to and find different events. When exporting your video, um, I strongly recommend exporting under the H.264 codec. This is the codec I export every single one of my videos with. I am not too knowledgeable um, in the different formats, but from what I can tell, H.264 exports a file that is smaller than, say, the Apple ProRes codec. If you do know more about this, let me know down in the comment section below. As I was saying, because it exports a smaller file, it is easier to upload to YouTube or to download to a flash drive or whatever you want to do with your final product. And as far as I can tell, it does not degrade the quality whatsoever, or at least not blatantly. Another tip deals with your audio. Sound is just as important as your video, and making the volume levels just right can be annoying when you are changing them in between clips. And one way to smooth out those transitions between different volume levels is to keyframe the audio file. You have probably heard about keyframing in video, but you can also keyframe audio. All you have to do is click on the audio volume level line, then just hit K, and a diamond will appear. Do it again, and adjust the volume as you wish. It creates a smooth, professional sounding audio track without those annoying clicks between two different volumes. And as a final tip, I highly recommend adjusting the color on every single clip you have. Color adjustment is crucial no matter how dramatic or noticeable. Um, my usual routine is lessening the overall exposure and changing the overall color to a dark blue tint. It cleans up the video's unnatural lighting and I think it gives a more professional feel. As you can see, with little changes that only take a few seconds to do, you can dramatically improve your video's quality. I would also recommend saving it so you can reproduce the same effect on other clips you have. Well, that pretty much does it for this um, tips for my Final Cut Pro users who aren't professional but aren't necessarily beginners either. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Um, let me know in the comment sections down below about what you think. Um, check out my channel DShack Tech for more tutorials just like this. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. Follow me on my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram account and check my new WordPress blog as well. Um, thanks for watching, and as always, see you guys next time. They had some iTunes 10 tendencies in it that, that you can actually revert back your preferences and little um, changes um, through that. So let's open up iTunes, and I'll show you guys how to make iTunes 11 look like iTunes 10. Soul Free is an exploratory action adventure game with an excellent mix of visuals, audio, and storyline. It takes place in a mythical land that your hero must travel through using his sword in battle. Damn, that was good.